A weight shift is one of the most powerful things we can do in any sport, whether we're shifting into a punch or shifting into a tackle or shifting into a throw, whatever it may be, the shift is a huge part of synchronization, but more times than not, I see this done incorrectly across the board. In today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how your stance width can significantly affect how and how well you can shift your weight. Let's go ahead and get started. So there's pretty much two major themes of what can happen when we're hitting. And that is we can either spin the bat to the ball as we've addressed in other videos, or we can release the bat with a ton of speed into the ball. Now, the stance width does not mean that we are going to release the bat perfectly. And it also does not mean we're going to spin. I can stand, and you'll see here in a second, with a very wide stance and have a perfect release. And I can stand with a very narrow stance and spin on the ball. But... There's a huge, huge, huge promotion in our stance width versus what we do. So just to be clear, we do not want to spin. We want to release the bat. So how does the stance width affect that? Well, first and foremost, if we don't have the ability to shift our weight, we're going to want to spin our weight. So a wide stance is going to heavily promote a spin. Again, it doesn't mean we're going to spin, but it's going to heavily promote that. And why that is, is that the wider my stance is, the harder it is to actually shift my weight. Now, again, I, I know I've talked about this in other videos, but it's extremely important to realize or to understand exactly what we're supposed to shift. I ask this to all my players, all my students online, in person, other coaches. If we're trying to shift our weight, everybody says, yes, we want to shift our weight. But, and when I ask them, what are we actually shifting? I get a blank stare or they just say their weight or something like that. They, we never get a specific answer. And it's very simple. What we do is we shift our center of mass, which is the, uh, the location of the balance point of our body. Wherever our center of mass is, that's where our weight is. So right now, for instance, my weight is on my lead, on my left foot right now because I'm standing to the side. Well, how did it get there? My center of mass got there. Now, where's my center of mass? My center of mass is located roughly two inches below the belly button in the center of your body. So if you could have a 3D model of your body, it's located in the center, roughly around that area. And all we have to know, it's going to be right around the center of our body in the middle. Now, wherever my center of mass is, that's where my weight is going to be. That's how it works. So wherever, so if my center of mass is in the middle of my feet, my weight's now in the middle of my feet. If it's on top of my right foot, I've moved it on top of my right foot. That's, that's all we have to know about how we shift our weight is that's, we have to know what we're shifting. We can't shift if we don't, well, we can't shift repeatedly every day if we don't know what we're shifting. So with a wider stance, it is much more difficult to shift my weight to my lead side because my center of mass has a further distance to travel. Now, what, why this promotes a spin is because, well, with my legs this wide, it's going to make me want to stay in the center of my stance. If I stay in the center of my stance, then I can spin. It's much easier to spin. This promotes a spin. But again, there's plenty of guys with a, that hit in the wide stance, especially in the big leagues with a wide stance, that have a great release, which is why they can hit so well. Now, the other side of this is, well, how do we promote a release? Well, we narrow up our stance a little bit, and now we decrease the distance between our center of mass in our foot. So if we took this to the extreme, well, now I'm really, really narrow, but now it's very, I can very easily shift my center of mass because it doesn't have that far to go. Also, my legs are in at an angle. You know, if I, my, my stance is wide, my legs at an angle. If it's narrow, I can just easily shift over. So the question might come up, well, do I want a wider stance? Do I want a narrow stance? How wide should I stand? Well, the answer is, is we want the balance between mobility and stability. So just real quick, if I'm wide, I'm very mobile. If I'm narrow, or, no, I'm sorry, if I'm wide, I'm very stable, meaning I can, I can brace for a lot. I'm very balanced. I can do a lot here. If I'm narrow, I'm very mobile, but I've lost my stability. You can knock me over very easily. So what we'd like is a, is a nice balance between the two. I want to be stable and mobile. I want to be able to have enough stability to where I can keep balance in my swing. And I also want to have enough mobility to where I can move my center of mass. So a more narrow stance again, it doesn't have to be real narrow, just a good balance between the two, is going to promote more of a release because now I can shift my weight into 
the ball. If my stance is wide, it's going to make me want to sit in the middle of my stance and spin. Again, this doesn't mean we can't get a weight shift. A wide stance is a little big reason why you guys see a lot of big leaguers get their back foot up off the ground is because they're attempting to shift their weight, but they can't actually get it all the way over there because their leg's on a slant and it's pushing against them. So the leg's pushing against them. My center of mass can't really ever truly get onto my lead side. So I can shift my weight for a split second, but it makes it a lot tougher. Now, if you can time it up really perfectly every time, you can get away with it, but you're never going to take advantage of the full use of your weight shift. So if we understand that a wider stance promotes a spin where we're going to spin on the ball and a narrower stance promotes a release where we can swing and sink and shift our weight into the ball. I'm over exaggerating just a little bit to show that we can really move. Well, we want to make sure that we are giving ourselves the best opportunity to swing and sink with our swing every single time. So what we're going to want to do for you guys at home, if you're standing with a very wide stance, let's go ahead and narrow it up a little bit so that we can move. And it'll give us a much better chance of getting in sync and actually getting the head of the bat where we want it and a lot more powerfully because it's going to be with the speed of the bat. Now, how exactly do I shift my weight? How far do I go? What's, what are my parameters? Well, we've got a great video in the All Access Library that I'm going to play a preview for you guys right now of on the weight shift that's going to show you exactly how you're supposed to move, where everything's supposed to be, and how you can start putting that into your swing. I'm going to play a preview of that video. You guys can get instant access to that by clicking on the iCard. If you don't see that, don't worry about it. You can click on the link that's in the description below. It's a great lesson. It gets very specific, and it's going to help you a lot with your game. Let's go ahead and get started. I'll start showing how our weight shift is involved with the release of the bat. We just simply need to understand exactly where we want to be in our weight shift. So we're going to get a lot more specific. We're going to be talking about the timing of getting the back pocket in front of the tee at the same time we're hitting the ball. But the first thing we need to do, guys, is we need to rep this out and make sure that we can definitely get the weight transfer that we need. So we're going to put our arms across our chest. We're going to get at least 100 repetitions 